Yeah, big game, obviously. Uh, Gonzaga's Gonzaga, one of the best programs in the country. Great to be able to get them to come to Birmingham and play us. You know, we'd like to get quality opponents for that game in Birmingham. I think this, this quality opponent is you're going to find. Uh, obviously, we went up there last year and played a pretty good game. So, you know, they're going to come down here looking to play a good game. I, I think they're one of two teams in the country play five quad one games, so they played really strong teams. They've had a great schedule. We've had a tough schedule. They, they probably even had a tougher schedule. So we, uh, we're we going to have to play well. Uh, last year's game, we played pretty well up there. So, you know, we're going to have to obviously do a great job on Timmy. It's not going to be a one-man deal. You know, Charles did a fairly good job at times last year on him, but, you know, we did struggle to guard him at times too. And, you know, He's what's he averaging 20, 20 points a game. He's top 20 in the country in scoring. So he's uh, he's good. And they base a lot of their offense around him, but they got three really good shooters go around him. They've got a good system. Coach Few does a great job. So it's, it's going to be it's gonna be a good test for us, and our guys are going to have to be ready to go Saturday. Mike, you kind of touched on the, the matchup with you guys, with strengths and strengths. We just, what do you, you know, how do you assess that, that matchup? Yeah, so I think that their their strength just drew Tempe, okay, but they've also added shooting around them. You know, like Hickman, Bolton, and Strother can all make threes at a high clip. I mean, they're all, two of them are over 40%, one's mid 30 So they've got shooting to go with them. Uh, I think we're a little deeper, although that gets, you know, without Namari and Dom still not being here, that, that, it's not as big a strength as maybe what it would have been before Namari went out. Um, you know, I don't want to say one's got a better front court, back court, because they they got Timmy's obviously like national player of the year candidate. So you know, you probably give them a nod in the front court. But I like our, our depth and versatility and what we have on both sides of the ball in the front court. You know, we may not have a a score at Timmy's level in the front court, but we got a good defensive front court. They will get tested by. Timmy, I do think we got a little bit more depth in the backcourt. Uh, you know, we need them all to play well. So, you know, if they're not all playing well, then the depth doesn't mean as much because you, you know, you play the guys that are playing well. So, but I, I, I mean, we're we're a little bit better defensive team according to the numbers, and they're a little better offensive team. Right like there, one of the best, if not the best offensive team in the country. So, you know, we we've got. Get our work cut out on our defensive end for sure uh, in this one. Charlie? You kind of highlighted the schedule they played, and, and you talked about Memphis, how you think they're probably a better team than they were last year. How do you think Gonzaga compares to last year's team? I know they only lost four games, but. They're a little different. They don't have uh, as many um, options. You know, they had Chet last year, so they don't have as many options in the front court or front court. You know, a lot, of, lot, lot more is going through Timmy. A lot went through them last year, but it seems like even more is going through them this year. Um, and I don't want to say they're better or worse because I'm not in their program to know what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, they're, what are they ranked right now? 15. So they were, what were they when we played them last year? Three. So and they just dropped from one to three, if I remember right. So we, uh, you know, they're ranked a little lower than they were last year, but I don't know that they're a worse team. I mean, they played a tougher schedule and it may have just taken a little longer to get their stuff together. I, um, and we played great up there too. So I definitely think Memphis is a better team. I, uh, Gonzaga was really good last year. So it'd be hard to say they're better than last year, but I'm certainly not saying they're worse. James. Uh, you know, when we didn't study Gonzaga film, I mean, they're just said that, you know, it seems like the ball's kind of working for him more. Is there something that you've noticed, especially this year, that he's gotten better at that's going to be a challenge coming in on Saturday? You know what? I He's good. He's just, I, there's not, I don't think that there's one particular area where all of a sudden he was bad, now he's great or good at. I think just overall, he's gotten a little older, more experienced, more veteran. I mean, he's a good passer. He's really good playing in the pocket. He's good in the post. He's good handling the ball in the perimeter. I mean, there's, you know, he can, he can shoot, he can score inside, he can pass. There's, he's not, 
if not limited really in any kind of aspect, I mean, he's kind of does a little bit of everything kind of at that, you know, interior spot for him. I, I mean, there's not huge holes in this game anywhere. He rebounds the ball well. He, you know, it, it, you look, he averages almost three turnovers a game, but they're asking him to do a lot. If you're the primary scorer, you know, they run your their offense through, you're going to turn the ball over occasionally. So I don't even want to say that's necessarily a weakness of his. He, he, he's solid. He's really good. Nick? I think you talked after the game that a little bit of roles reversed that you guys came uh, there last year and they were the, the higher ranked team and kind of trying to upset them and now reverse in that role. I mean, what, what's the message to the team about um, how you guys handled this game and just that maturity? Yeah. I mean, we've talked about the fact that when you get ranked like we do and like we are right now, you go to places. We've been there before two years ago. People storm the court when they beat you. And, it's a big deal. You know, I, I don't I don't want to put a ton of emphasis on any of that, to be honest with you. I mean, they, our guys know we've got a bullseye on their back. They, they know it. Like, But it's more like, let's get down and figure out what we have to do in this particular game. What's the scouting report? What do we have to do to win this game? You know, what, what didn't we do well against Memphis that we need to fix? And there was plenty we didn't do well against Memphis. What do we got to get better at from the previous game? And what do we got? Do in this game, so it's been a decent amount of time on trying to fix some stuff we didn't do well against Memphis today in practice. Spent some of the time, and there's a lot of carryover too. I mean, Memphis hurt us in transition. Gonzaga is a great transition team. If our transition D doesn't get better from what it did against Memphis, we're not going to be able to beat Gonzaga. So you know that point of emphasis. There's certain carryover items from you know one game to the next that you try to emphasize, which we did, but. We really, it's more of a, let's focus in on this game right here and let's just take care of this game. I thought we got a little too, you know, outside focused, all that other areas last year, what this means, not like, all that stuff will take care of itself when we win the next game in front of us and just get better from game to game. Awesome. Yeah, kind of going off Nick's question, if somebody had told you that Alabama's favorite of Gonzaga about five or six years ago, they probably would have called you crazy. But assuming that Alabama probably will be favored in Birmingham on Saturday, what, what does that mean to this program and where it's at right now? Yeah, we've come a long ways in three and a half years. I think it really speaks to the players and you know how hard they play, how together they're, they bought in, the culture that they built. You know, we tell the guys all the time. Like I mean, I've been coaching over 20 years. The players time is limited as a player, particularly in college basketball. Like, it's your team. Like, we're going to make out of this what you guys make out of it. And whatever kind of culture you guys want to build. Now, we're obviously as coaches guiding it. But it, the players don't buy in. And you're not, it doesn't matter. So really think, you know, and look, look at a guy like Quinterly who's been here the whole time we've been here. Now he sat out the first year, but he was a huge piece in the SEC championship year. Was a tournament MVP. You know, was here last year, played really well at times. We kind of, you know, coming back like, like, what's what's he doing to help build the culture here? He's been really good so far. His play's been a little up and down, but people got to remember he wasn't even predicted to be back until about now. We were hoping to get him back about now, so everything worked really hard to come back early. You know, let's give him a little bit of a pass because he came back early. He's playing before he probably should have to help the team, and like he still getting his feet under him, but like, you know, what culture did he build? Look at Brandon Miller, like, McDonald's All-American, highly touted, playing his cuisine, freshman in the country right now. You know, if he's not the team guy that he is and doesn't have the camaraderie and chemistry with the team, we, we, we're not as good as we are. Look at Sears and just different guys that brought in. I just think you got to look at the players and how they're building the culture and what that is. But shoot, the program's come a long ways. I, uh, I think you're right. Probably five years ago, everybody would have. I mean, shoot, Drew Timmy took an official visit here, if I remember right, before I got here, and he chose to go to Gonzaga. Uh, I wasn't involved in that recruitment, but he chose not to come here and went there. Um, hopefully, we can 
I put them together twice. I think you made the wrong decision. <laughs> I think you made a pretty good decision. <laughs> He's done pretty well against Aga. Don't, uh, don't take that the wrong way. <laughs> hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask you about the importance of uh, playing in Birmingham, the state flagship university, playing in the biggest city and I, in the state. And I know you recruit nationally, internationally, but what, what does this do for recruiting playing in Birmingham? I think it helps. You know, there's players out of Birmingham that we're trying to get. There's players across the state. We're, we're, we're making it a goal to try to get the best players in Alabama and come to the University of Alabama. I think playing that game in Birmingham every year helps. And you know, we previous years we played up in Huntsville, played down in Mobile this year. We're trying to get, we're playing different areas around the state, different city, you know, different years. We can't play in all the major cities every year, but from year to year, I think we can go play in different places. But we're gonna try to play in Birmingham every year for a lot of different reasons. You know, it's our students are on break. Great time to go up to Birmingham and get a lot of the fans that are in Birmingham, donors, boosters up in that area, a game to watch up there. You know, like you said, recruiting up that way, just in general, like Birmingham's the, you know, it's the city of Alabama and we're coming up there to get a game sold out. What they tell me, I think the first time in 30 years that a basketball game sold out at that arena since '92, I believe, in the SEC tournament. So that, that's a good sign for us if we can keep selling them out, incentivize us playing up there. Hopefully, it's sold out with about 99.99% of Alabama fans because when we were up there, Seattle, that place was about 99.99% Gonzaga fans when we were in there. So I'm hoping they get the same uh, road environment that we had up in Seattle. Okay. You talked about correcting some of those Memphis mistakes. It seems like this practice was a little intense. Just what was the emphasis, and was there, you know, uh, was there a specific emphasis or intensity in this practice? Yeah, no, we got after a little bit today. We uh, first off, sorry for being late today. We video went way longer than we usually do. We had to, we, we came yesterday off, so we had to clean up all the Memphis stuff, and there was a lot to clean up. We we were not good on either side of the ball for large stretches of the game. Turnovers late in the game. They scored 13 points in the last 50 some seconds. Um, we didn't close the game well. Memphis, and with a lot of credit to Memphis, they exposed some stuff that we didn't do well. Our transition D was terrible. You know, staying in front of the ball, our guards got to do a better job. Our pigs weren't good at ball screens. Um, we can go on and on. I mean, there's a whole list of things we weren't very good at. Offense struggled for a long time. So, you know, we tried to clean a lot of that up on video, went a little longer than we planned. Uh, then we had to get to the Gonzaga video, show their personnel, their, what they're trying to do offensively and then in practice. Uh, it, was, it was supposed to be a little shorter practice and it just, you know, sometimes things, you know, don't get done at the time you want to get it done because it's not quite right, so you gotta go a little longer. And that's what happened. We played a kind of an end of game situation deal at the end that we, we gotta get better at closing games. I mean, you know, it's a good chance this game ends up being a tight game. They're good, we're good. Uh, it's gonna be really hard for either team to pull away from the other one. I and mean, there's a chance it could go either way based on turnovers, shooting percentage, whatever. But in all likelihood, it's probably gonna be close and we need one on ones to close games and we haven't done a very good job closing games here lately. Two more, Charlie. Just want to ask about Jaden. He obviously made his first start in the last game. How have you seen him kind of respond to that, and, and how big is he going to be with, with Namari out? Yeah, I mean, he's like a settling influence. You know, he plays really hard. He's got a high IQ. He's a great two-way player. Brings a lot of winning traits to the team. You know, he makes tough plays. He puts his nose in there. He gets tough rebounds. Steps up to the challenge. You know, he looked he could guard. Foreman, we sometimes have guard a four because he's tough, physical, and guards point guards. When he's in, the ball gets moving a little better. You know, we, you know, we found Brandon. Kind of got Brandon going there in the second half against Memphis. Um, there, I mean, he just creates plays for other people. So it's one of those guys that you can kind of move. You know, where you can play him with whoever. Playing with Sears, you're gonna get Sears more open shots. Playing with JQ, he's gonna get JQ. More open shots, you can play JQ off the ball a little bit that way, like kind of like we did with Herb and JQ played off the ball. You can 
you know, I thought today in practice he did a great job finding our bigs a little more. We made a big point. I thought we missed our bigs a lot against Memphis. He was one of them that really made a point of emphasis on finding them. So, you know, I, I don't know what the starting lineup is going to keep going. And, and we've never made it a huge point of emphasis to start the five best players per se. We're going to give. We're going to start a group that gives us a great chance to get a good start to the game and then it also gives us a chance to get a rotation we want to see to be able to use our bench and our depth. So we, we felt like he was a good defender for Davis and he was for a good part of the game and we, everybody, himself included, did not do a great job with Davis there in the last part of the game. So, but I thought he did a pretty good job there for a while. You know, at the beginning he got a couple buckets and he kind of settled in and did a better job. So I think he... He was just kind of a settling, makes a lot of winning plays. Just kind of get, get the team organized and run well. Last one, Thompson. Yeah, Gonzaga's played a lot of big games over the years. Since 2018, they're six and one against AP top five teams in the regular season. And what are the keys for your team to become, to avoid becoming the seventh on that list? That's a good stat, I didn't know that. I would like to know how many of the times they're six and one, they were actually ranked ahead of the top five team they're playing because they've been number one a lot too. So, you know, my guess is maybe they don't, they want to rank ahead of them all the time. But to answer the question, you know, what do we have to do to make sure we got to execute the game plan? Like, we have to do a great job on Timmy. We can't let their shooters get off from three. Our transition defense has to be a whole lot better than it was against Memphis. Then our, 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 on our offensive end, like, our turnovers have to come down. Like, we can't continue to turn the ball over you know, almost 20 times, 20 plus times a game and give our offense any kind of a shot at beating quality teams like this. When you're turning the ball over as much as we are, just makes it really hard on your defense and hard on the possessions. I mean, you gotta shoot the ball at a high percent and everything else to be that great. So there's a lot we gotta do to win this game. It's not gonna be an easy one. We scheduled tough opponents for a reason. You know, we got exposed a little bit against Memphis. Let's see if we can get better and fix it and be a little better against Gonzaga. And six and one's a good number. That's since when? 2018. So it's in the last five years. In Las Vegas. Him being in Vegas. Last, other other than that. Last year. Yeah. Nobody. Top five. Regular season. It's good. What's our record? I'm not sure. I don't know. <laughs> My guess is it's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good seeing you guys. See you up in uh, Birmingham.